this isn't a scheduled event. Um, a good mate of mine, Andrus Toth, who's also from Australia, and he's also a streamer uh, on Leechess. Um, we decided to play a, a, a 10 match series of uh, 2 0. Um, so I'm going to stream this. All right, we've got a, an advanced French. Now, what will often happen here is black will play f6 to break the position open. Um, I'm going to put a pawn here myself on e4 before he does. And then I can also trade off here. Potentially trade off here and open up with something like pawn at h6. Okay. He's going to go in first, so... Put the knight on g5, I think the knight's good here, covering f3 and h3. Yeah, in this case I actually choose to sacrifice the knight, just to keep this pawn structure so solid. Okay, now I want to be quite forceful here when I go with queen h5. I want to get it with check um, to get out of these attacks and counter attack very strongly. So, immediate threat will be rook at f8. Um, while he has no rook in hand, there's no way he's going to mate me with what he's holding. Um, there's no knight at h3 or knight at f3 tricks which lead to smaller mates because he needs a rook to sacrifice. Now, I have to be careful if I put a rook at f8 here because he can play queen takes, queen takes, knight at f3. With king h1, I do get mated with knight at g3, capture, knight at f2, rook takes, rook at g1. So, yeah, I do need to be careful here. It's not enough to say that the queen's defending. Um, so I'm going to play pawn at e7, which is a bit... Um, it's specific here. Basically, if he takes, I recapture this with check. Um, but I don't give up a rook in the process. Okay, so now I can choose to defend. Or I could choose to, to play a sack here. The sack's probably good enough to win. Uh, and now I don't have that option, but uh, let's let's capture here. I've only got 15 seconds left, so I need to motor. I need to move very quickly. But if I can get a knight in hand, um, I'll be able to flush out the black king with knight at g6. Okay, he's resigned there. So, 1 0. So, Andros and I live in, uh, in different cities. Um, in fact, I'm, I'm not actually sure where he's living currently. Uh, but, uh, we may, we may have met in person, maybe once or twice. Um, not even sure we would, have, we would have known each other that well back then if we had. Um, but, but we know each other better from Fix, uh, when we both played Bikehouse there.
It's asking what was the right move instead of bishop at g8. Um, geez, I wonder if I know even. Right, I'm putting a knight here first just to cover g7 because I want to develop bishop b7 without allowing knight at h5. Yeah, here I'm going to hit this pawn. So I have some problems here. My light squares are crumbling quickly. So I've got to take some defensive measures here. Um, I'm not going to recapture this pawn because I'll lose my queen to the bishop at b5 pin. Um, and now I'm getting quite passive. So this pawn is hanging now. Um, Depends if he can crack open the dark squares or get in another way. Just covering f7 here. Hanging tight for a little bit. So he's just defending the pawn now. So look, I need, I need to get rid of this pawn. This is the, the big thorn in my side. I'm going to allow him to capture a knight. Um, okay, he's not going for it. So blocking off here. I just need to neutralize that. Um, I expect pawn at e6. No. Okay, just gotta go, gotta go. Time's the problem now. Oh dear, it's a terrible move. No, he was too good at the end there. All right, we're, we're one each now. Mm. Against this move order, I like to come in with knight g5. I think it's very strong for white. He's saying he forgot that it's a no-go <laughs> in crazy health. Uh, actually, no, I'll play knight at g5 first. No capture. OK. 
Okay. Yeah, so this is a quick one. Alright. Thibaut Duplessis, he said, nice. Um, good, to, good to know he's watching. Um, thanks for tuning into my channel, Thibaut. Um, Honour to have you here. Let's play knight g6 this time. I want to hit the f4 pawn twice. Now make use of this pin. I'm going to sack the knight. If he captures with the bishop, I'll take it because the bishop would e3. If he was taken with the rook, I was considering taking. So now he's resigned quickly because he saw he was just going to lose lose the house. Uh, Thibaut's asked if uh, I noticed we're experimenting with the Sunset of Crazy House engine. Uh, yes, I have noticed its presence. Um, I did see um, someone tried uh, a couple of players played against Sunset uh, AI 8 level. Um, I've made a commitment to the community uh, community uh, here that I'll, I'll put together a stream or a, a recording um, of a, a man versus machine match. Um, so, yeah, I mean, in terms of what I think about it, I think it's great that it's been... Um, integrated into leeches um, the the engine itself um, has been around quite a while um, I'm not I'm not so sure if there's been improvements made in the recent future um, if it's open source um, but uh, yeah it's an engine I'm actually I've actually been familiar with for a number of years um, so in general, what I find is is that the engine will be good at calculating mates and, and all the tactics, but is, is strategically weak in some areas. Um, but yeah, it, it's good to have that uh, on the server. So um, you know, I'm impressed that, that there's always improvements coming on Leech It's fantastic. Okay, so here I want to thread a knight at h6 mate. I can't take this first because then the bishop takes and it covers g7. So I'm putting pawn at g7 on first so I can try to capture the knight and still play knight at h6 mate. Okay. Yeah, so Tebow's made a comment. He said, uh, okay, cool. Um, level 8 might very well be too weak for you. Um, it only has one second per move. But the analysis mode has more time and should hopefully give proper analysis. And um, says so I look forward to hearing feedback on that later. Um, so yeah, aside from processor speed and and time allowed, I think um, you know it, it, there's also something to be said for the coding of the engine. Um, not that it's bad, but um, you know it, it is not just about um, time, and it's not just because there's there's a computer that analyzes things that it's now stronger than humans because you know the crazy house engines haven't been developed as much as the, the chess engines have so um, yeah that's that's my take on, on crazy house engines all right I'm just raking up a couple extra pawns here uh, I was threatening to take the knight and play knight at e2 but now prevented that. So 
zero. I'm tempted to, to find something tricky and decisive here. I'm not seeing it, so I'll, I'll play conservatively. There's no threat to this. Um, Put the bishop on g6 because knight e4 is coming in. Mm, I've left this open. Uh, now I'm just running short on time. So he's pushing me back now. So if I'm with, I mean, if you're playing against someone like an IM, like a strong chess player, um, they'll, they'll be good at uh, finding ways to mobilize their pieces in Crazy House. It was nearly expected. I'll cover c7 with a bit extra. And also threaten things like knight takes. Then there'll be tricks on f2 and h1. But I only have 23 seconds left here, so uh, start start going. On here would be very nasty. Oh, big problems. Oh, just let me off the hook there. Um, he should have played queen at d8, and then I'm forced to play rook at e8. <laughs> He's just said no. Um, queen at d8, rook at e8, queen takes, takes, and then uh, I think knight at d6 looked very strong. Um, yeah, he shouldn't have. He shouldn't have given that one up. I want to try to put pressure on this pawn by uh, removing the defender on it. I'm going to choose a block with a knight just to keep d3 intact. One thing you've got to note is when you're relying on pins, you've got to look out for when they castle and make sure you don't get stung there. Okay. I've left that unguarded. Not playing a great game here. I've blundered the pawn here, I've blundered on the fork here. Okay, so I'm going to give up the coin back. So I don't mind if he plays knight at e3. I may be able to take and sneak a mate in somehow with knight f6. Um, knight at h6 doesn't work, of course, because the bishop could take here. 
Um, so I'm looking at knight at e3, bishop here. So knight f6, and the reason why I say knight f6 is because if king h8, I need two knights to mate. I need one to put on g6, and after they capture here, another one to put on f7, so capture rook, queen at g8. So all I'm looking at is after knight f6, pawn takes, knight at e7, king across, pawn at g7, knight at f5. Looks promising enough, so I'm going to go for it. Um, he hasn't seen the mate coming. So, yeah, if, if takes, then knight at e7, king cross, pawn g7, king takes, knight at f5, takes, takes, king g6, queen at g4, bishop at h5. So I would have had mate as well. Um, so Andrus was nice enough to acknowledge that that was top class. Um, Alright, we'll, we'll play a Fianchetto set up here. Uh, score now is 6-1, and... Uh, we agreed to play 10 matches at the start of this. Okay. Queenie 2. It's interesting. No, I haven't gone to D7 deliberately. So that's... Um, E6 is still covered by the bishop. Oh, I want to hit with pawn at g4. So while this looks passive, it's actually not so bad. It, it does defend. Hmm. I'm going to take with the bishop first. I don't want the pawn hanging on e6 with the bishop still there. I think it's beneficial having them trade it off. And now, it's a question if I should play king h7. So I want this threat to stay open. Um, there's a couple options here. I can um, take the knight first and then take this bishop, or I can play something like bishop at h5. Um, yeah, the thing is, if I take this and then Sack the rook takes, knight at e2 check, for continue and queen, he moves, knight takes f4, then rook at f7 again, and then he captures the knight, and he looks okay. So I'm going to play this. I'm not concerned about pawn at g6 type sacrifices. If he plays that in pawn at g6, I'll always have this square on h8. Um, what I should be more concerned about is my clock. I'm going to back off here. So I'm, I'm weak on the light squares, but he can't get in on the dark ones. Okay, so I think he's trying to grab a knight now. So I'm going to try to counterattack. Forced to take that. I have to bring the knight here to give myself some cover on the back rank. He's coming in with a knight again, so g6 is covered. No, I'm spending too much time on that move. Okay, but we're looking at a sharp finish here. Got to, got to finish quite accurately. The knight on e5 is my problem, that's what I need to get rid of. Okay, I can afford to be a little bit aggressive.
Yeah, dude, it's all heading south now. Too slow. No, he's defended well enough. Okay, we're now at 6 2. So there I felt like I just left myself too short on time. Uh, Bert Wonderstones left a comment. Would you ever consider playing a standard game of Crazy House? Meaning 20 plus minutes. Um, yeah, look, it's not my preference. Only because I'm time poor. So the prospect of playing potentially 40 minutes for one match um, isn't that enticing. Um, not that there's anything wrong with playing Crazy House at, at such a long time limit, um, but yeah, it's it's just not a preference of mine. Um, the the standard of, of what's played online is generally quite quick, um, and uh, that that suits me just fine. Yeah, looking at a grab here and D5 push. What I'm doing, I'm, I'm holding a pawn uh, in reserve here just so that I keep a little bit of an edge of flexibility on my opponent. Okay, so he's played knight h4 to basically say you can take this, but I'm going to get a lot of pressure on f3. Um, How to deal with that? You know, what? I'm just going to play simple. Allow that capture, but not allowing to penetrate with Bishop G, G4. Staying solid. Okay, so now he's forcing the issue a bit more. Yep, again, I'm taking too long. So I'll play aggressively here. My idea is if he takes, I'm just going to play knight h5 and bishop at g5. Fork the queen and the knight. Observe this knight for now. Just picked up a pawn on the side there. I'll be careful. I'll probably have to sack some things on g2 if he goes for it. Because uh, this bishop's now hitting here as well. Um, I need to make my mate threats on the back. I'm doing it in a bit of a sneaky way. Probably doesn't even feel like a mate's hope to my opponent. Um, but it will in a moment. So, um, 
Yeah, a bit of a sharp calculation at the end there. I so I had just enough pawns to soak up um, his rooks on the back file and uh, deliver back rank mate. Okay, so here where white's played a gambit, I just want to try to neutralise um, any any kind of chance of initiative that white has with the forward pawn. Uh, and I figure if I can neutralise that, I should stand better being a pawn up here. <coughs> and if worst comes to the worst, you can always part with that pawn as well um, to catch up on development. I could play knight f6 here. I think I will. I'm not put off by bishop f7 because after knight g5, sack, take, knight g5, king e7, is king f8. There's. I don't really see a strong continuation for white. <coughs> so don't be too afraid of, of this f7 sack. Um, it's it's a classic sack that um, people are, tend to avoid. Um, in bug house, it, it often makes sense, but sometimes in, in crazy house, you know, the, the material disadvantage you would get um, is too much. I'll take this. Knight at e4 is not a problem. Um, so now I've got to preserve my queen. So yeah, white, white still has the initiative here, but um, black has a material advantage. So I need to fall back a little bit and uh, defend. Okay. Then um, find a way to attack myself. So in this situation, you know, I'm facing a couple checks here. So I'm, I'm not going to try to prevent uh, what's coming there. Rather, sometimes it's good to defend the square that your king is sitting on because then when you run, your opponent can't follow your king. Um, Bishop at h5 also had an aggressive um, feature to it as well. Might be playing rook e1, but pawn at e2 blocks. There's also knight at e2. And I'm preferring a knight. If takes, takes, and rook e1 again, I can afford to sacrifice the queen on e1 because after knight e1, I put a new knight on e2, and regardless of which way the king goes, it's rook at g1, mate. Um, I figure if he takes this, knight at h3 is going to be too dangerous. If he takes it to knight, then I'll just pick up this bishop in a bit more material. Okay, I can actually sack here. I didn't see that earlier. I think it actually only works now because he's put the knight on e5, um, so that blocks. Alright, so what I meant by that is if, um, if you pull back a few moves where I said, oh, I didn't think I saw it before, it's possibly because it wasn't possible. Um, so it, here, um, I think it's C4, well I'm in check anyway, so I do have to cover it. This is critical in that it blocks the file, so that's what makes rook at F1 work. 
um, because the key point is after queen at d1 check, rook at e1 is no longer check on the king. Um, that gives me the time to do something else and then place the mate. Um, all right, uh, that's it. Uh, you know, nice short and sweet series. Ten matches, uh, two zero. We finished up. Uh, you know, I picked up eight wins and two losses. Um, so fairly happy with that. Um, I'll be heading on leave. I mentioned this. I'll be heading on leave within the next couple of days. Um, uh, I'll be going overseas. Um, so I will try to do uh, more of the. Recordings probably uh, not as much live streaming because where I'm going I won't have a strong connection um, Hopefully it's, it's still good enough to play on um, and you know, Hopefully the laptop I'm bringing is actually good enough to to store recordings um, while playing uh, We'll find that out um, When I go overseas, we'll see what happens um, Anyway, hope you enjoyed this uh, short series and, uh, We'll see you next time